everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this pretty fantasy landscape. I'm feeling like I want to use a lot more color lately. I did a series in black and white with a little bit of red. Uh, so I had a limited palette series that was a lot of fun. Uh, but now I want to go right back to my colorful paintings. So as you can see, I've got a few of the brushes that we're going to be using today. Uh, and this canvas is a 16 by 20. I primed it once with acrylic gesso and let it dry. And we've got this oval stipple brush. It's a number 10 by Colorantic, but you can use any large stipple brush that you have. I've also got a number 50 Filbert, a number 11. So I've got this number 11 flat brush. I've got some neon pink, neon violet, phthalo blue. <laughs> That right side up uh, bright aqua green or turquoise and some neon yellow cool so we're gonna go ahead and get started we're gonna work on the background and I'm gonna be very intuitive and free-flowing with this at this point I don't even know what I'm painting yet you guys do because you saw the thumbnail and that brought you here to this video so hope you guys have fun watching this painting come together I'm super excited this is a way that I really like to approach painting so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started, guys. So to begin, I'm just going to take these colors I've shown you and place them right on the canvas, directly there on the canvas. Now I'm strategically placing them where I know that they're going to blend nice together. So I know I can have the yellow here mixed turquoise with it to make another shade of a beautiful lime green color. I can also pull a little bit of yellow in with this pink to make a beautiful coral color. So like I said, we'll add a little bit of turquoise off to the side there. I'm going to add a little bit of my purple or luminous neon violet here. I'm also going to add a little bit down here. The pink with the violet will make a deeper, like more magenta shade, it'll be pretty. And the violet down, down here on the right hand corner, I just had to get this lid off, it was pretty tight, will blend in nicely with phthalo blue. I'll also be using a little bit of white. So I've just got a palette knife here and I'm gonna take a little bit of white And just dab it along here. The brush that I want to use for blending now is my number 10 stipple brush. I'm going to get it just a little bit wet. Make sure that you don't have a lot of water in your brush when you do this. The idea is just to have it damp enough so that it can help the paint blend and flow nicely without the paint drying into your uh, bristles too quickly. I want to start with the yellow. Now you can start blending your paint in swirls or, br or brush strokes like this, kind of crisscrossing and a little bit rougher. I like swirliness, so that's kind of my, my thing. I love to create swirls and movement like this. So I'm going to go right in, right in here into this violet, and I'm just traveling around. this paint out of my brush so that I can come over to this side with a clean brush otherwise if I bring that pink and that purple over into the yellow and green it's going to make brown so with a clean brush I can just start
and I can come over to this side as well. And then let's hit that purple down there. And I know right away I need a little bit more. So before this has time to dry, let's go ahead and do that. I love this color. I think this is my favorite out of the whole bean series. I'm just going to start to pull the paint side to side um, because I'm starting to see and feel a landscape here, an image take shape. So I'll just do that much for now and I'm going to just wash this brush out. I'm going to go into my 50 Filbert, get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to start softening these colors a little bit more into one another. I'm not pushing too hard with my brush at all. And I'm going to carefully pull in some of this blue and yellow. and swirl a little bit into that peachy color. So we've got some nice colors. So the next brush that I'm going to be using is my flat brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to take a little bit of white, so water and white. And I'm going to start to push and slide my brush side to side up a little bit more here. I've picked up the purpley blue color there off of the, ca the canvas because it's still wet. But whether your painting is still wet like this or if it's dried, I want you to use and apply the same brush strokes and technique. Okay, there's another brush that I want to use to soften and create some, some lighter tones. And it's one of my pretty crystal iridescent crystal handled mop brushes or, or blending brush. It's actually a makeup brush that I got a whole set of these on Amazon. They're wonderful. They don't shed, they keep their shape with no water, because I don't want to lose that shape. I'm just going to add a little bit of that white. And I'm going to start applying it lightly. See that softness you get? Add a little bit more. As I'm doing this, I'm creating, I'm picking up a bit of that color on the canvas and creating some softer tones. So I'm going to tap in again. It's making a kind of a 
icy mint color and I'm liking that so I feel like I want to start adding uh, some bushes or trees back here we'll see where this takes us but I'm just trusting what I'm kind of feeling right now at the time without hesitation Now I've picked up a bit of that purpley blue color and I'm going to apply that over top of some of this green area here and we'll get a darker shade but yet it's still so soft which is nice. Now, if you don't have a mop brush like this, you can use um, filbert brushes. You can use a fan brush. It will look a little bit different. You won't get uh, necessarily the poofy, rounded shape of the bushes like this. I'm going to come over on this side with a dirty brush from picking up those colors. And I'm going to start adding a few little taps down here. And I'm going to pull. So pull, flick, and then just pull and sweep over. So sometimes I don't even know what I'm painting. A lot of the times I don't know what I'm painting. I'm led by brushstroke and color more than anything. I worry about what it transforms into after. I like to just kind of work like this and then kind of step back every few minutes or so often and start to envision uh, what might come next and, and what it kind of starts to look like. So obviously these are gonna be trees And with getting a bunch of water on my brush, with all those colors still in it, I like to kind of just push off the canvas and squeeze that water and paint out and let it drip down the canvas. while those drips are flowing, I'm going to use some burnt sienna. I'm going to add some of my prism violet. Just going to look, oh there it is, Just trying to find my liner brush. I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to take a little bit of purple, burnt sienna, take those two colors and I'll just start with my tree right about there. I know I need something darker than that violet behind, so the prism violet's really dark. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush. I'm going to use a little bit of that loose paint that I dripped off. And create some branches. Just traveling around with my brush, 
free flowing. I roll and twist the brush in between my fingers to help get those more natural shapes. Now for some tree trunks in the background, I'm just going to use a little bit of white with a bit of these other colors that are left in my brush. And we'll just start barely touching the canvas. A little bit more water so it flows a little bit easier. You just want to use the tip of your brush for this. Now as I'm doing this, all of a sudden I see something right in here. See a little staircase. So I'm going to go with that. And I think it goes through the woods. And out here, I'll pick up that color again, kind of that water down color. And now I can continue with my branches. So those same colors. See how I'm shaking while I'm pulling. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of that white, make sort of a plum color. Let's not forget to add branches that go this way as well. So maybe we're adding just a whole new tree here in the foreground. And those blue, light lavender or bluish branches are far away in the distance from other trees that we've got going on back there. So I'm just going to make this one stand out a little bit more. just by adding some more of the purple and the burnt sienna. And back over to my flat brush here. Just going to make that stand out. And let's just keep going. We've got a staircase going up to another level. And take this color again. We'll A little bit of white. A 
well, I'll work on those stairs a little bit, but I want to make sure that they stand out. So I know everything's going to dry a little bit darker. Okay, so I've got an awesome brush that I want to use next. This is a one inch uh, oval mop brush. And I'm going to take some of the violet burnt sienna. A little bit of white in with that. Let's get that pretty plum color. And we'll start got this really big tree here. I don't want to cover up everything that I've got in the background though because I really like those those colors and I, that's a really important part for me of this painting. I don't want to kind of exaggerate and bring this branch out a little bit more. That's going to help draw our eyes in to the light in the center. I like a little bit of this burnt sienna in here for some earthiness. It helps to balance out and enhance the pretty colors that we've got. Even though we don't have a branch down here, I'm just going to add this anyways. We can come in later on and add a little branch if we want. And I'll just add a little bit of base of the tree here or ground. We'll take a little bit of that white. We'll just tap a little bit, a little bit of something down here and then very soft pull and sweep. I'm going to add a little bit of that to the tops of the trees as well. Again, it'll dry a little bit darker, but I want to have a few different tones going on in the trees. We'll make it stand out a little bit more. Add a little bit to the side there as well. Just the side of that staircase where it leads. I don't know, maybe there's a beautiful cottage somewhere back in there. Okay, so on that side, I would like to add, I'm just deciding right now, I'd like to add some olive green. Um, let's see what we've got here. Got my light olive green. I think this would be a really nice color balance for all those pretty colors. So this is another earthy tone. And I'm gonna find a different brush to use for this. Here it is. I thought I'd lost it. It's an oval stipple brush, but it's kind of soft. The bristles are synthetic. Anyways, I'm not going to get this brush wet. I'm going to go right into that olive green. Tap. 
And now I need to tone it just a little bit to have a, a base so that it shows up and I can make it look a little bit 3D. So I'm just gonna push and tap back into the green. And let's start, oh, oh yeah, that's a good color, I like that. Right up here at the top. And see this green is complementary, any green is complementary to red, and we've got a reddish tone there. Okay, I'm going to make that color again. I'm getting into darker territory on this side, so I added a little bit more purple. And I know I'm going to be going over the wet drips up there that have some uh, white in them. So I'll just add this here for now, and then I'll go back up there. I'll add a little bit, a little bit of that green, give it a moss, a little mossy look here. And a little bit there. And if I take a little bit of white, I can make a softer, a bit of a softer shade there. And tap just really, really gently. Add a little bit here so that when it dries, we have a few different tones. Okay, I'm going to switch brushes now. Back over to my liner brush, a little bit of that purple with that olive green in there, water, and we can come back in and add some new branches here. We need those branches that are behind that we can't see, as well as some that are in front. Remember for those little branches, just use the very tip of your brush. a little bit of my burnt sienna and go inside this one and I really do like adding moss to my trees or making them have that weeping willow feel to them um, it's important for me to have a lot of different um, direction brush strokes so I've got puffy ones I've got swirly, soft ones in the background. I've got lines that go like this. Um, and I've got the tree trunks that kind of go straight up and down, but I want to have a little bit that go like this that kind of helps to bring the landscape together for me. So I'm going to take a little bit of that olive green and a little bit of that purple. There's a few ways that I do this. You can just kind of tap, tap, tap like that and flick. I also like to get a bunch of paint on the end of my brush. I think it'll show up a little bit better if I add it right about here. So line it up, kind of like how I paint waterfalls.
You can use different brushes for this too. You can kind of tap and turn your brush on an angle. That'll give you more of a leaf shape if you wanna have that kind of a look. There's just so many different ways you can take this. green in here. I'm going to take a little bit of this beautiful blue, phthalo blue and prism violet. You can use any blue and purple that you want though and you'll still get a gorgeous color. You can't go wrong by mixing purple and blue together. So I think we need a little bit more depth right here. It's very blue. I want to balance that with a little bit of purple. Just, like I said, add a little bit more depth and shadow. A little bit to the stairs. So I'll just hop over to this side. That blue purple with a little bit, just mixing a little bit of the white in there. depth to some of the moss that we have here so not the white I'm going to be using a little bit of that purple blue mixture just push and tap another filbert brush So 
So we're just enhancing a little bit. And the paint that I'm adding it on is still a little bit wet. And that works for me because then I'm even getting more colors and shades without even trying. It's just gonna add more to this painting. I think that it's time for some waterfalls. And I knew right when I added that flick down there for the moss that it kind of looked like a waterfall to me. I'm just gonna take, I've already got a nice color for a background. I'm just gonna take a number four flat brush with a little bit of water. Let's see if that's enough water and white. And we'll start Oh yeah, if it flows easily like that, then you know you've got enough. And maybe there's a little river or creek that flows back there. Just gonna go over these. bit of leftover white in my brush that I just used there to soften this area in here. Just kind of scumble over, set it in the distance a little bit. Right back here, and I don't know if it's just me, but I envision a little castle back there. I can see the shape of it already. So we'll see if we can add it some details to make that stand out a little bit more just by adding this white that's slightly, just barely tinted with a bit of that smoky lavender color in there. And let's see if we can. So just some little pulls, different levels. Take a little bit of water on my brush. You don't have to try very hard. Just little sweeps and pulls. And we'll make these really skinny triangles for the turrets on top. Just a little bit of my blue, purple, burnt sienna with a little bit of that white and see if we can make this stand out just a little bit more. Not details, just shadows and highlights. We'll have a little bit of something coming down the side here. Those same colors. So we have like this winding staircase that just comes out. I 
think it would be nice to add a little bit of highlights going up there. I'm going to take a little bit more of my pink, a little bit of my yellow cool neon. The first layer I'm going to add is my light olive green. So I'm just going to tap. into it. it just goes around like that but I kind of like this mist this pretty color in and behind there the next brush I want to use is my mini mop brush but this will give me a little bit more of a different shape to separate it from the other foliage so let's take a little bit of pink a little bit of white You don't want to have too much on your brush. You want to kind of mix the paint by tapping it like this and tapping the excess out. So I'm just going to start to just little, little amounts like that. And then a little bit slightly larger as we get down here because it's closer to us, but it's not in the foreground, so you're not necessarily going to make it large like something that we've got right here now the next color i'm going to use is i'm not going to wash my brush out i'm going to take a little bit of white with that yellow cool i'll add a little bit here and there Just gonna water down my brush slightly and blend some of that peachy color in back here. Then I'm gonna take some white with my flat brush and bring these waterfalls back so you can go over them as much as you want. Ideas are really starting to flow now. This is part of, huge part of why I enjoy painting like this so much. It keeps it exciting when you're working on something like this and you just keep getting more ideas, it grows. Your creative juices literally flow and I'm gonna have some uh, waterfalls flowing down here with my angle brush. Just using white. A little bit more water there on my brush so that it can flow out on my brush better. So they look delicate like this, right? You don't necessarily have to have a lot of color. a little something like that can be really soft, delicate, and pretty. I just want to create a little reflection down here in the water. So I'm just pulling and then I'm going to go across. If I'm not careful, I'm going to pull that green color from there. So I just want to make sure I'm being careful. So I'm not applying a lot of pressure. 
Make sure I get the lines off of my moss there. And I'm gonna go over to my liner brush. And this is what I do with this type of painting, guys. Sorry, I tend to hop all over the place because I don't wanna stop when I get an idea. So it's no big deal, I'm just adding nothing major here, but I just decided I wanted to have another branch or extend this one. Really having it come down low, right off that canvas. Back in, olive green, purple, a little bit of burnt sienna, and just gently add a little bit of moss coming down there. I'm just going to use my liner brush here to add a few more detail into just a little bit of that purple and burnt sienna. Go right under in between those little pillars that we added and then I'm going to dab, dab, dab. Okay, the final thing that I'm going to add, and I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to use a fan brush and my luminous violet. I'm going to add a few, just a little bit of a maple looking tree here. Okay, so without, this is a uh, number two. I'm gonna pull, turn, and wiggle. Whoops, I wanna make sure I get all of it. So I know this color looks really pretty together. Green and purple are complementary. So I'm just gonna start creating little taps I put some of that pink on there. I could take some of that as well. I'm going to use all this paint that I've got here, the neon pink and the rest of my violet. And we'll just bring a little bit of it up and over here.
and with a little bit of water. Change my brush. Pulling and sliding. Just to create a few little branches here to finish off this painting. Right there, I love that turquoise with olive green and that violet color. Okay, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was a joy to paint and share with you guys. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you enjoy watching it and you learned something new or got inspired. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Really appreciate your support. Feel free to share this with your friends and art groups. And more than anything, enjoy your painting process. Have fun, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye, everybody.